It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's Superhero Slate. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes. It's Superhero Slate. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, superheroes, and riddles, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris Dillard. And my name is Mike Royer. And welcome to the darkest, grittiest, official Superhero (laughs) Slate review of The Batman. That's right. I need everybody to look behind their shoulders in front of their shoulders, which is just looking forward, uh, I need you to eye down every shadow that yes. is around that could form a human being because this could possibly be Robert Pattinson. Is, just is there a eye. man in those shadows, Mike? I don't know. <laughs> nobody, nobody knows. Well, that's the that's the gimmick. That's the idea. Uh, there was just a jump into a, a little bit of a theater experience. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> this was a, a deep cut, but there was like uh, four, I think four kind of like teenage guys at Thursday night showing before we went into our seven o'clock show that were all dressed in like, um, uh, what, what's it called? It's not like a black trench coat. It's like a black, they're all in like black pea coats okay. and like black turtlenecks and everything. And then I start to think about it. And I was like, oh, they're, they dressed like Robert Pattinson from the premiere just the other night because I was uh, kind of recalling some of the pictures I saw on Twitter. So I thought that was pretty funny. The big, big uh, black Cody war. Yeah. yeah, they like all took a picture in like the corner together. I was like, I wonder if anyone is putting this together. And I was like, oh, Robert, I uh, like Robert Pattinson has kind of um, uh, laundered himself through uh, pop culture into this uh, younger generation, right? Yeah. Because we're used to kind of, I don't want to say look down at him, right? Because I think there's evidence of us on the podcast, like not being too judgmental when he was cast as Batman. I think no. we all kind of thought of the <clears throat> Joker casting for the Dark Knight and we were like, you know, hey, let's wait and see how it goes, right? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Uh, to these teenagers, they, they grew up with Robert Pattinson like yeah. as... I don't want to say like an equal, but maybe as somebody to look up to. Well, so it's just, yeah. it's different. And also like this goes, okay, just a heads up. There's no spoilers here at the top of the show. I think we kind of forgot to say that. We'll let you know mm-hmm. before, before uh, spoilers Always. Uh, come down the line for sure. But this is one thing that me and my wife were having lots of discussions with because uh, my wife is uh, exhausted with uh, Batman in general in, in pop culture. And I think that's fine. No, no judgment there at all. But you always have to uh, remember like, oh yeah, there's this whole new generation, right? And this is going to be like their Batman, uh, if, if you will. So it's just, yeah. it's interesting just to see how we progress it, every decade with different Batman, different actors, it, different interpretations, different uh, cosplays at opening night, right? It, it's funny you mention that because this will probably be the first of three different Batman actors this calendar year. Uh, with the Flash coming up, right? We have the return of Michael Keaton. So this generation's parents, Batman as <laughs> are well. You, are you uh, are you including uh, Michael Morbius as the literal Batman? No, 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 not. No, we're, <laughs> we're not well, that's a, that's a whole different Batman who was also Jello played the Joker, right? The the most hated version of the Joker, uh, known, <laughs> known to man, uh, opposite of Ben Affleck's Batman, which is rumored to also be in the Flash movie this winter. So yeah, we um, it is the year of the Batman. This is DC's first superhero movie in theaters, I believe, since the uh, Birds of Prey film as well. I believe. Oh uh, yeah, which was kind of right at the tail end of the normal uh, life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that was um early 2020. I believe it was February 2020 was that one. So it's been all over two years. The end of 2020 saw the uh, Wonder um, maligned Wonder Woman 84 hit the streaming service, HBO Max. And then uh, the uh, popular uh, Suicide Squad and its sequel series, Peacemaker, uh, come to HBO Max um, as well. And that just wrapped up. We, we talk about it in our regular new show. I think it was last week or two weeks ago we talked about the finale. Um, Mm -hmm. so, uh, DC has definitely seen its ups and downs the past several years. We all know this. And, um, with Ben Affleck jumping into the, uh, Zack Snyder universe as Batman, this is a whole different, um, Batman world, if you will, a a separate universe. It's not tied to the DCEU or the Justice League or even the Joker, even though I, I see some, some very, I, I saw some very cool parallels they could have used across the way uh, with the, the, the Joaquin Phoenix Joker film. However, 
uh, that is not the case in this. And some people might be very confused. Um, my wife, who's not in on this as much as we are, not doesn't really care. She just wants to, you know, she's in with the name Batman. She knows Robert Pattinson, Zoe Kravitz, of course. Uh, she knows the, the big actors in this. And then um, it's funny, theater going experience, I got in line. A lady I work with, um, not directly, she's only in the office once a week, um, but I know her, uh, was in front of me with her um, – boyfriend husband whoever significant other uh and she was like i don't know much about these but he loves to go so i'm 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 starting to learn to love him too so i think that was a really uh fun experience to be surrounded by people who don't know as much as we do yeah uh, and, well, I mean, and just kind of take it all in yeah that's one very unique thing when we talk about a batman movie in general right like we've been talking about superhero movies and pop culture here for 365 episodes now yes. uh, you can officially listen to us every single day of the year on repeat if you'd like to the superhero slate podcast but batman is like it's different, right? It's an institution. Yeah. It's been around forever. It's almost like its own genre of film, if you will. So it like this is the type of movie that like if your parents or your uncle have who haven't seen like any superhero movie in like the last decade, they'll be like, oh, there's a new yeah. Batman movie. Yeah, I'll probably go watch that because it's Batman. Batman um, also trans- transcends. I think you, you say movies transcends that like TV shows, right? Like animated project, live action, 66 Batman, like your grandparents knew Adam West as Batman. Yeah. Like, like, and it, that's the, it's huge. And that, yeah, and that's the leg up that Batman has in general over a character like Spider-Man if you kind of have to pit two heroes from two different comic book uh, labels against each other. Uh, Spider-Man might be the more um, maybe approachable hero uh mm-hmm. and maybe be more well known but batman has the leg up when it comes to kind of cinema legacy and i don't think yeah. anybody would really uh and, fight that and batman i think has an appeal to people of all ages since he is an adult and the kids also look up to batman where spider-man you know as as, as cool and popular as it, it leans into the kid side right like you know, uh, teenager, young, young adult era uh, people mm. probably find more yeah. to like in Spider-Man than Batman. Yeah. And from a narrative point of view, there's more legwork you have to put into a Spider-Man narrative, no matter which way you put it, right? You have to explain the existence of kind of superpower, scientific mm-hmm. experiments. You know, you have to explain a web shooter in some way, right? A radioactive <laughs> the, spider. The way. Or, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, Batman, it's not hard to back into that, right? Well, you know, yeah, you just got a vigilante put some pointy ears on him, well, right? <laughs> I, I was. Well, it's not even that. You know, imagine if Jeff Bezos, if he was a good guy. You know, that's what you tell kids these days. He's got lots of yes. money, he, um, uh, you know, and that's where Batman makes all his technology yeah. from. I don't know anything about Bezos's family, but let's check it out. I, 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 I was like, so I'm like should it. we check this family? Like, is that is that what we're missing here? Is this are we in the yeah. dark reality? You did mention theater going experiences, and I have to use this uh, as a point of uh, therapy and. Uh, just to get out a bit of frustrations because I had a very rough theater going experience. Unfortunately, I I wish it wasn't the case. I don't think it colored my view of the movie too much because I feel like over the the last couple days, I've been able to kind of detach the people sitting next to me to the narrative that was on the screen. Um, I, and I, I just have to say, usually the, the bet is, right, when you go to a Thursday night showing, one of the first showings available in your area, you're going to be surrounded kind of by the people that uh, respect what you're about to watch. You know, they're really excited to see it. They got their tickets right away. You know, they were on the website right when you were trying to secure those seats. And uh, you don't have to worry about people holding their phones out, you know, or texting or you know, nothing like that. Ho- hopefully no crying babies as well. Even though I did see some kids b- being pulled out of this movie after three hours, totally asleep and zonked out. So I thought that oh, was man. pretty funny. Uh, but I have to tell you, it can co- sweep totally the wrong way. And you sit next to people that are way too into the movie and they're discussing their theories right next to you. They're leaning oh, yeah. over to their friends saying like, oh, I told you, oh, I bet this is going to be that. Oh, look, 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 it happened and happened. Is that this? Like, oh no, that person, like they were like trying to do their own podcast, like while they yeah. were watching it and it was infuriating. And I know what you might be saying, like, why don't you tell them to be quiet? Like, why don't you like speak up or say something? And I, I've said this before on the show. It's a, it's a, it's a double edged sword, right? The second that you like speak up and you tell somebody that's sitting very close to you or even next to you that they're being rude and they need to, they need to shut up and they need to stop talking. It totally colors the, uh, the movie in a way of like, Oh, now I'm stressed 
the whole yeah. next like two hours of this film because I have these people next to me and they're like, everything's really weird. The tension between you and the person, whether they deserve it or not. So you kind of mm. just sit there and hopefully hope that they'll get it. Uh, but yeah, uh, it was really yeah. frustrating. Uh, and the theater was getting really warm too. I don't know what was, what was going on with the AC in that theater, but it was a, it was a bit yeah. of a, uh, it was a bit of a struggle, especially since it was uh, mm -hmm. three hours. But since that was Thursday, today is Sunday. I think I can hopefully come at this from a, um, uh, an un, unfettered perspective, I guess. I, uh, I, I was going to say, I actually had um, the good screening mic because I went on Tuesday for the IMAX fan event. Mm -hmm. Luckily enough to secure seats. Um, so that was, that was good. It wasn't in the front. wasn't, you know, it was, it was in the same row we normally sit in. And, um, you know, to the, to the right of my wife was a, a kid about 10, between the ages of 10 and 12. And she's a, he's a, she's a teacher of kids around that age. So he was very excited about the movie, uh, which, you know, she thought was really fun and like added to her experience rather than, uh, taking it away, but I, I didn't have anything. I think I will go ahead and say this. I, I do have to watch my IMAX movies at an AMC and AMC is turning me away from going to the theaters by this new practice. They put on the Batman where they actually add a surcharge on Batman tickets over any other movie in the theater. They're literally charging oh, more this. to watch the popular movies. The ones that are going to sell the, that are going to sell to watch them. And I think that's, um, you know, we're coming out of a pandemic we are literally starting to go back to theaters and now they're adding extra money onto that as well for the ones that you have that you want to see in theaters, right? The ones that you, yeah. you really want to go. And I think um, for all the reasons that streaming, um, you know, isn't a, a true theater going experience, despite the fact that I've built my own little theater, uh, that's some real bullshit. So I'm really, yeah. really I mean, kind of upset about yeah. the idea of that. Obviously it's attempt to make more money, but is this also maybe to push more people towards like the AMC kind of subscription service. Uh, what is it? it a list. It correct? could, it could be, but like most of these people, I don't, I, I think it's the other way. I think these people who are watching this aren't the people who are going every week to the theater. Um, because I, I, I had the a list for a couple months and I didn't go nearly as much to utilize it. They have a, a Stubbs premiere list, which is like, you pay 15 bucks a year and it's a little below it and you get a lot of points and stuff like that. And that's what I have and that's fine. But I mean, I, I, I didn't get the, they didn't push at my showing at least the, the, the a list at all. They just took mm. your money and, and kind of ran with well, it. So the question I has, is if this practice kind of gets off the ground, it becomes normalized. Does that mean there's going to be like an indie movie that comes out and, you know, like September at the end of the summer, right? That's going to be like $4. You know, that's what I'm curious about. Are the ticket prices going to get, um, are they going to get cheaper? And then also this is going to be really confusing for box office reporters, right? You know, I, I, ticket price usually is not associated with the box office numbers. Nobody's really doing that math. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they just want to know what is the total revenue brought in by the movie, but this could kind of color things with an yeah, asterisk, th right? Because that's kind of how they artificially boosted kind of sales, uh, with the uh, 3D movies making right, that's what I was gonna say. Av Avatar is an artificially boosted movie due to most of those screenings being in 3D, right? Or I would they have those special 48 frames per 48 frame per second movies like The Hobbit ones did for a while there that were like mm. almost double the ticket price. So yeah, it, it's one of those things. Like yeah, when we say box office, we say how much money came in, but like, is there a reason more money came in because they're just adding? extra money to it yeah. like it's so like i understand like box office that's the big kind of headline that you can publish every sunday or monday after a movie has come out but really if we're going to be judging the success of a movie based on the people that went to see it, it we should be doing it by tickets sold that seems to be the most uh, logical way to kind of decide how successful a movie has been especially when you're comparing them to other movies as well so who knows? Maybe one day that metric will take off. I don't know how exactly we get get well, that happening, but tickets sold the, should be what we're using. Well, the more the more I, I dip dived into this, and it could be per region. I know in LA they said that it's a dollar fifty more per ticket. So that for, at an AMC, Mike. So this is you know your neck of the woods. However, even in Europe, they've been charging premium for um, better seats. So the better seats you, um, it, they're treating it like a concert or like a, a sports event, right? So. The, 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 the seats you choose can actually one day affect how much you pay for a ticket and how much money that brought to the to the, the box office at the end of the day, which uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, to me, it's really, really like 
making me like, well, don't really have to go to the theaters now, do I? Because we, we learned yeah. how to, to survive two years without it. But it just yeah. sha- it just puts a damper on our experience because I do like to go. I do like um, you know, being at these places and supporting them. But that's just... The, the 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 corporate overlords might get their fingernails into the Batman. Like he he's not even safe from 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 them. But the only fingernails that should be in the Batman are from Catwoman, and I think we'd all agree. Well, that's um one way to interpret that. I don't, uh, for sure. <laughs> uh, however, on um, speaking of box office, Mike, uh, the latest report as of like two hours ago, uh, Batman currently has brought in two hundred forty eight point five million dollars on opening weekend. Um, this yes. is worldwide, so half of that I believe is domestic, um, uh, the other half is is international. So that's been uh, pretty good. That's a pretty good number. It's a so nice far. chunk of change, Chris. Nice, nice man. I, I think um, what was it? It's, it's, it's still behind. It's trailing behind Spider Man, but like you know, I I would put them on par with each other. Like we we're gonna see this. But the question is, does the Batman have legs, Mike? Will word of mouth drive people to see the Batman? In theaters, and that's where you know why we do this to to talk about what we thought of the film, and either convince you to go or tell you to make up your own mind and go. One of the two. Um, so this we have not talked about the Batman other than just a couple, I think, what, a couple factual things, right? Nothing actual like plot wise, right? A couple just, text messages here and there, but we've been relatively in the dark yeah, on the bat. Yep. Yeah. And I had the experience this weekend. I was uh, spending the weekend with some friends who we actually saw it. We, we actually had to go to a separate room to talk about the Batman because not everyone had seen it. So, uh, <laughs> the house. so uh, we, we had some conversations this weekend, but Mike, uh, I'm going um, to go ahead and I'll pull back the curtain and allow you to take the stage, the spotlight and tell us what you think of the Batman. Yeah, spoiler free, of course, but I had a great time with the Batman. The first thing that top popped into my head was the conversations that everybody was having, uh, the post-Nolan trilogy, where Marvel started to take off and everyone was saying like, oh, Nolan made superheroes dark. Everything's so dark, but Marvel's making so much money because everything's lighter. So everybody kind of thought that was going to be the trend moving forward. And then lo and behold, I go into this movie on Thursday night and it is the darkest Batman movie I've ever seen. They just totally went in the opposite direction. They're like, no, 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 let's make it darker, grittier. I would hamper to say maybe more realistic, and I honestly had a great time. The performances are great. Uh, Robert Pattinson is an amazing Batman. I can't wait to see more of him. Uh, I loved the look and feel of the film, uh, especially the the sets, the locations. Uh, Gotham feels very unique for a town that we've seen many, many times in many different iterations. Uh, I saw at the end uh, in the credits, when the credits are actually rolling, not post-credit scenes, like the literal credits, as they did shoot on locations in London, and you can definitely kind of feel some of those gothic influences when you're uh, seeing different scenes in the film. Uh, and I loved, uh, I loved the score. I can't remember the last time I went to a kind of superhero comic book movie and the score actually stuck with me after I left the theater. And I'm not necessarily saying I need a sticky, catchy score when I go to a film like that, but, uh, I was, uh, doing a little work yesterday. I put the earbuds in and I was like, Oh, what do I want to listen? What do I want to listen to? And I put on the Batman soundtrack, uh, that, that just kind of like really dark and broody music was like really fun to work to actually. So I would say overall, very positive experience. Um, it's a little long and I think this movie would definitely benefit from cutting at least 20 minutes. Um, I feel like there's a couple, uh, there's a couple through lines that, you know, maybe don't cross over as elegantly as I would have liked them to uh, pay off. So I kind of felt like uh, we're, we dedicated a, a little bit of time to something that maybe didn't have the best payoff. But beyond that, it was a great time. Uh, it was an interesting uh, story that we haven't quite seen in the Batman universe. And that could just because our villain is the Riddler, the first time we've really seen that character taken no. seriously. On well, screen. seriously, okay. I was like, not <laughs> the first time. Seriously. Sorry, so I was like, oh, he's been in there. Okay, but I get you going. Yeah, on screen. But I feel like we have something really strong to build off here. Uh, I mean, geez, all the performance. I mean, we'll get to it more uh, in, in the spoiler cast, but, like, man, even Colin Farrell as Penguin. Uh, and he, I, I thought he was going to be possibly a bigger component of the film, but just the kind of bits that we got them in were just very very compelling so i have to say uh thumbs up for me um looking forward to more and uh i would like to 
welcome uh, patented to this kind of uh, um, maybe Batman royalty, if you will. I don't know if that seems a little too... uh, to uh 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 even uh mm-hmm. i don't know what i'm saying here but yeah great chris what did you think of the batman it's okay uh i'm not in love with it i mean i, I think it's a great film i think it does great stuff but there's there's a lot of little things that just don't pre- prevent this movie from reaching you know an upper echelon of films for me right uh i i think i'm going to disagree with you that gotham does feel unique because literally it says um it's not supposed to be gotham square garden and like literally it's new york but they replaced got new york with gotham literally across most of the buildings so i'm like oh this is just new york and they've put gotham on everything um i will say you know other things i i i, I do enjoy the supporting cast is fantastic like you said like right like you know, Colin Farrell, uh, Zoe Kravitz. Um, uh, oh shoot, I, I'm going to lose his name. Uh, Andy Serkis. Paul, Paul. Oh, I was going to say Paul Dano. <laughs> no, oh, I mean Paul Dano. Even like so. I, I mean every every character and even the main actor, even Robert Pattinson, great performances throughout. Uh, I'm also going to probably push back on the the soundtrack a little bit because to me the main soundtrack kept sounding like it was Darth Vader's marching theme, uh, and it kept like every time I heard. The, the two notes. It never went to the third one in the marching thing, but the two notes together made me think Star Wars way too many times during this movie. And I had a, I went back and listened to it yesterday because I was like, I am I going crazy or was this really something that was happening? Um, I think, you know, while, yes, it, it is uh, dark and I hate the word gritty. I, I, I literally hate it. It is. Is there a reason why we have to take keep taking Batman darker and darker since Nolan's film. So like Nolan had the dark film and then we had, you know, uh, um, Zack Snyder tried to make an even darker version of that. And then like, you know what, let's go even darker than that. Do we have to keep going dark and, and gritty with Batman to make him successful? I don't know. Is that what society is telling us to make him, uh, to, to be successful? I'm, I really am curious because I'm just not like, it's fine. It's great. The intro to me wore on a little long. Like you said, it could be short, but like the intro wore on me a long. So I kept thinking to myself, I'm like, is darker better? But you know, overall, I think there there's some some really good stuff in here. It, it doesn't make it a bad movie. It doesn't even make it below an average movie. But to me, I'm just you know I'm lukewarm on on the film as a whole. And um, yeah, a lot of it evolves into spoiler discussions, and that's fine. And we can we can talk more about the smaller details. I will say the script suffers. Um, actually quite a bit uh, through through how it was written and how things connect to each other and we'll talk more about that if people have um what more details when we get into spoilers and um what was it what was the other there was something else um oh if if i was to liken it to any movie mike i would think um the movie to me this reminded me of the movie seven and not and that's not a bad thing because i love the movie seven right like i th- i feel like if you're like well i'm do i want to watch Batman? how am i gonna get a good vibe from it to me Seven is is like a good parallel for a movie that's very similar in vein of like darkness and 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 again we got the Riddler so there's there's puzzles to be solved and intriguing actors and characters and villains so um, I, I'd say it's very very similar to that but for, for me I just come in really lukewarm and it's not because I again people are like oh it's because you don't like PC it's not true I I, I do uh, it's just I really feel like i've seen this before and i was just treading the same ground over and over again and um and and there's missing a very very important character in this story mike and we'll talk about that in spoilers so yeah. uh do you want to well, get into that you want to yeah, jump jump. Here, yeah i'm gonna put a time code in here for anyone who who doesn't want to to listen to spoilers so if you come back and uh we'll, we'll do more you can you can pick up right here so to me this movie lacks horribly bruce wayne um this is it's called the batman i get it but like the the moments we see robert pattinson be bruce wayne he's literally still just the batman without his suit on right like in the church like where he's like going into the church which really is a very effective scene it's very scary just to hear screaming and sirens in the background you're like what is going on what's happening very unsettling scene but i feel like there is no bruce wayne in this and it's just all batman all the time and i think to have a good batman you need not necessarily an equal amount but like a really good bruce wayne along the journey as well and like you know when you go back and look at all the other actors who played batman and and compared you always you don't think how are they as a batman are they good bruce wayne along the way and i feel like the great batman robert pattinson really really struggled on the bruce wayne aspect in this movie um which you know kind of led me to like oh i thought we we're gonna get bruce wayne solving these riddler crypts right these puzzles but i feel like he just knew the answers right away so like 
is the detective aspect even there? Like he he went to sleep and Alfred solved the the crypt uh, the cryptogram for him. Uh, felt a really really convenient to move the story along. And I, I'm, I'm yeah. nitpicking, but like yeah, I, I'm, no, I'm I mean, trying to I... find things to to to. I, I, I need to be critical because it's a really good movie. It's beautifully yeah, shot. I think even. that's I think that's every kind of story storytellers kind of um, hurdle that they have to uh, that they have to jump when they're telling any sort of Batman story, right? Because I think everyone will agree unanimously the best part about Batman, you know, is Batman, right? And really, Bruce Wayne is kind of the supporting character that kind of bolsters like the decision of a man to put on a suit and like risk his life to protect the city of Gotham. Mm-hmm. So you do need a, an, at least an effective portion of Bruce Wayne to get that across. Uh, but w- if push comes to shove, I'm, I think I'm always gonna, I'm always going to enjoy more Batman than I will mm-hmm. uh, Bruce Wayne. So yeah, you, that is a fine edge to walk, but that's the really interesting thing about Batman in general. They're going to keep making these movies until the sun dies out. And especially when we're elderly, so we're going to have lots of versions of Batman to look back on to go, oh, what is kind of like the right balance of Bruce Wayne and the Bat? So uh, that that is what that's one interesting thing, right? Uh, yeah. I feel like whenever I go to a Batman movie from now into the future, it's almost like I don't want to say I don't have any skin in the game, but it's like, oh, well, if I don't like this version, right, I'll just sit around mm. and wait, you know, until yeah. the next decade and I'll get another version. So it almost kind of makes it less stressful, right? You know, the last kind of 10 or God, is it like 15 years of Marvel now? I feel like I've lost track of time of how long the MCU has it's been going. Four, 14 years this year. It's It's been a relatively high stakes game, right? For Marvel fans, this is the first time they've seen like these interpretations of these characters in live action. And they're just like praying to God that it goes well. We've had so many versions of Batman. I just mm. feel like, okay, whatever. It's kind of like when you go see like a local theater uh, put on like a show of like Hamlet or whatever. Like it doesn't really matter if it's good or bad, right? You know, there's tons of versions that exist out there. So yeah, yeah. it's it's... It's interesting. I feel like that's the that's the yeah, way that you, it, I can kind of put it. <laughs> and, I, and I agree with you. Like entirely agree with you. Like that's why to me it's just it's just okay because like to beat you know wh- whatever whoever your favorite Batman is, whatever your favorite Batman movie is, like you've got to really I think elevate to a whole new level and you know really do things that, differently. And I feel like this is kind of it's not not necessarily Nolan verse, uh, but like very close to in terms of like how it feels and, and, and everything kind of involved it, with it. Uh, I will say, uh, you know, again, pleasantly surprised by um, the, the ancillary characters. And I think that's something, you know, to talk about here is like, um, they just kept introducing more and more villains, if you will, quote unquote villains, because like you have the mobster scene, huge mobster scene. You've got the fantastic car chase scene, right? Like where Batman's in his car chasing the penguin down the highway. I think that's just very, you know, it's, it's dramatic, it's Batman dramatic. And it's like very like, you know, the, just uh, crazy yeah, that, how that's filmed and looks along the whole way. The uh, car chase scene I saw on Twitter, got the seal of approval from Edgar Wright, who yeah. did a whole movie based on uh, car chases. So yeah. it, it, it definitely met the technical level when it came to an, a director's approval. Yeah. And, and it felt like people like a little, really driving, right? They're, like there's a very busy interstate in the rain or, or highway mm-hmm. in the rain, you know, like they have to stop and push the brakes. They can't use, they're not using their cars to push through like huge semis, like the tumbler and other things. Well, it was, it was really cool. I thought it was a very interesting. And then, you know, of course the, the shot we saw in the trailer where he comes through the, the flames at the end and you know, the penguins really like he's surprised and they, they, they catch him. But I mean, that was, uh, I think a really, really good scene. The penguins great. Um, uh, John Turturro as Carmine Falcone. Um, uh, I, I knew he was in it. I didn't know how big of a role he'd have in it. And it, like his role kept escalating in the movie, right? Like, First, you kind of just hear about him. You see him in a couple photos, and then the next thing you know, he's talking took, to Bruce Wayne, and then and then he's talking to other it, people. It took me a little while to warm up to uh, John Turturro because I almost exclusively know him as like a comedic kind of character when it comes to uh, films and TV, right? Not necessarily saying he's out there like doing stand-up comedy, but he's usually kind of a joke, he's a point a, of humor. He's a character so, actor normally, yeah. Like, very yeah, much out there. Exactly. So seeing him being this uh, mob boss, I mean, I don't want to say it was like poor casting, because he's a, a fabulous actor, 
But I, I started to come around towards the end of the movie, so he, he started to win me over. But uh, I would say a lot of people were saying that this movie excelled because we didn't have to see the Batman origin story, which mm-hmm. I would absolutely agree. It's kind of just right. like common knowledge of society of how Batman became Batman. Uh, but also it does suffer from other Batman origin stories. I remember a lot of mob talk in like Batman Begins, yeah. Nolan's first movie. It kind of seems to be Batman's kind of first attempt at fighting crime is right as he runs into the mobsters and i don't know if i'm going to be ruffling too many bat feathers out there right but to me the mobsters in the batman universe are the most boring characters and villains right they're just like the most base basic characters that could really be plucked out of any movie they're just Mm. mobsters that's all there is like now sometimes they could hire like a like a villain or something like that and it really makes it more interesting for batman but when I was watching the film, I was just like, I, I'm I'm looking forward more to the sequel when I don't have to deal with mobsters anymore, yeah. right? I want to see like some silly, not silly, but I want to see like more like kind of comic booky action. Yeah. You don't really get that too often with mobsters. Yeah. Well, I think with that, you know, the I, I want to talk a little bit about the Riddler. The Riddler is the main villain, right? And he's he's doing mm-hmm. the, the murders and he's leaving the clues, and those are really fun. Uh, I, I I again, I wish he didn't like know the answers right away. Uh, I, I wish, or he like he like there was a reason why he didn't know all the answers um but i think one of the the biggest things and great things you know up until the the scene where batman returns to his apartment after paul dano has been unmasked and revealed he's a Mm -hmm. fantastic like number one villain you know in a long time in a movie but when he goes and watches this stupid youtube video where he's like hey guys i'm riddler here just telling you I'm going to blow up the, the dam later. Like, it changes his persona once he's unmasked to some, like, goofy kid um, in, like, the video that you watch, right? Where he's, he's like, mm-hmm. riling up all the people. And I think that really – and then they have all the, the, the Riddler wannabes, right? The um, – show up at, at the, the – the, I guess Gotham Square Garden. Um, and I, I feel like that really, you know, diminished the Riddler as a villain after that moment. Like, once they unmasked him – and, and and he went back to his apartment and they, they saw this goofy video and all the the copycat Riddlers was really a, a really detriment. The ending of this movie was very predictable and I, I wish it hadn't been as much, but like it's fine. doesn't distract as a whole, but like there was so much more possibility here for the ending to do, I think, better. Um, yeah. And, and, they, I mean, and they didn't do it for me. We're the great villain, I think. But once they unmask him or right after they unmask him, he becomes not as interesting as he'd been the entire film. Because once he has that mask on and he's like yelling at the videos or yelling at his captives, right? Like, like he's so he's such a powerful, forceful presence in those scenes. Yeah, I have like I think I have two thoughts uh, based on this. So the first one was is this is something that I kind of personally struggle with with mo- with movies and television in general is when any narrative leans too much on social media, right? Uh, because it's a very it's a very weird thing to do because it's very of its time. You are a hundred percent dating your movie. Where I feel like a lot of times my favorite films are the ones that try to remain. Um, I don't want to say like classical, but like ambiguous of the time, right? Mm -hmm. You know, can we tell us, can we tell a story that's kind of analogous to what technology is available? Uh, And that's one thing that I was enjoying at the beginning of the movie, right? Like when Batman had his uh, video recording contact lens, you know, I I don't think that's necessarily too far fetched for me to believe. But one thing that I really, really appreciated was what does the visuals on his computer look like? Like all of his footage, like none of it was full color. It was all within a circular kind of like fisheye frame, right? Yeah. He wasn't doing a lot of zoom and enhancing, if you will. He kind of just looked like he was a dude who, yeah, like, who like had a, a travel bit of technology. Yeah. yeah, and he was like trying his best to pull the footage with what he could. He was telling Selena when she had the contacts on, like, oh, you need to main- maintain eye contact with these people. And she's like, no, this is weird. I can't stare at these people. And it's just like, well, in a different different version of this movie you know somebody would have just wrote it in a way of just like oh i can just identify these people right away it just yeah. kind of added a little bit more realism to that mm. but when it comes to like something like social media or oriented like i didn't believe the riddler was on twitter or anything 
like that. I assumed it was like a, a like a dark web uh, yeah. room or something like that. But it does kind of make him seem less menacing, right? When it's just like somebody like in a chat room. Even though this stuff like does happen in the real world, there's like yeah. there's literally people like organizing like really terrifying things just in private like Facebook groups. But mm-hmm. I don't know. For me, I don't. Maybe it's just our generation. Maybe it's just our age, Chris. You know, maybe the teens. Uh, the the zoomers that were in the theater like they didn't even bat an eye at it it was just part of them yeah. um, but I would agree that yeah once the Riddler kind of gave him gave himself up the 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 threat kind of changed right because seven perfect example to compare this movie to because that's what um oh what's his face uh I just I just watched him in a time to kill the other day uh he, the actor that's been canceled <laughs> yeah yeah um the, it's not Patrick I I want to say Patrick Swayze. It's not Patrick Swayze. And then I would say Kaiser Soze because I was referencing usual suspects. But but yeah, I know <laughs> yeah. you're talking. Kevin Spacey. That's there what it was. Is. Kevin, Kevin Spacey, Spacey, who was in Seven. He gives himself up at the end of the movie, and you're just like, whoa, what's happening here? They've been searching for him all this time. What's his game plan? What's his end game? And it's because he wanted to kind of see this thing unfold at the end in front of the in front of the police officer, the detective, see what would happen. He, he had a personal the, end game against the the, yeah. the, the protagonist. Yes. And the interesting thing is, since we've seen the trailers for this movie, I knew at one point in time, Paul Dano was going to be giving himself up in that um, diner because it's a pretty uh, iconic moment in the trailers that we saw. It's one of the only times that you see Paul Dano's kind of face to confirm that he's in the movie. So I thought he was going to have more of a plan after Mm -hmm. like, oh, is there something in Arkham that he's trying to get? You know what exactly is going on here? And it's. Uh, yeah, I didn't really enjoy the payoff all yeah. that much. But one question I was going to ask you, because I needed another set of eyes on this. So at the end, when uh, when uh, Bruce is talking to uh, the Riddler inside of Arkham, right? Uh, at the beginning of the scene, uh, he starts to say, oh, Bruce Wayne. And I think we are supposed to assume that he knows Batman is Bruce Wayne. But then at the very end of the conversation, he said he talks to Batman as if he's not Bruce Wayne. He's like, oh, yeah. Hey, me and you, Batman, the one person yeah. that we couldn't get was Bruce Wayne. So he doesn't actually know he's Bruce Wayne. right? That, that is correct. So the whole point was, you know, the, the Riddler, he, he had a list of people he wanted to get. Um, and he, you're, you're led to believe he knows the identity of Batman because, because Bruce Wayne was on this hit list due to, again, the sins of the father. Like, you know, his, his father mm-hmm. was a politician, had somebody killed, so on and so forth. So yes, you're, you're, you're completely correct that he, you are Thank led you. to believe that he knows who he is, but however, he's just mentioning like, I got everyone on my checklist except Bruce Wayne and this, you know, it's going to eat at me a little bit. However, you know. Batman, you're on my side. We, we we did this together. And I thought that was really cool because literally he did convince them to do it together. They didn't lean on that a whole lot. But like in that moment, they were like, you know, he's like, yeah. He's, Riddler was like, yeah, you actually did all the work. I just, you know, let, kind of laid the clues here together. Like we're, we're a team. We're pals. We're buckaroos. But um, no, I, yeah, I think, I think, I think Paul Dan is a great actor. I don't, I have nothing against him. I just think the way they, they set the, the point of it, like there should have been something more personal. I would have, I would have liked to him, him to know that it was Bruce Wayne or found out. However, what would that have actually affected the movie at the end of the day? What, what, what did Bruce Wayne in this movie actually do or have anything to say? That's why his identity to me needs to be more Bruce Wayne. So he has something at stake. If they find out he's Bruce Wayne as Batman, what does that really do to him? Like we don't know in this movie, right? Like they've already mm-hmm. attacked Alfred. So, cause we know he's after Bruce Wayne, but that's not a Batman, you know, thing that was just a Bruce Wayne bit here. Now I want to go ahead and talk a little bit about something. I feel like there's two opportunities this movie had to bring Bruce Wayne into the light at the end of the movie and, and help like we find out this whole movie, all the cops, all the, the criminals are all in this together because there's a billion dollar fund, right? The, um, the, the not reinvention, the rejuvenation. What, what was that fund called? Uh, close enough. I don't remember. Yeah, what it was it, it's it's a fun to make Gotham. You know, bring people out of poverty in Gotham, help the poor people in Gotham. However, you know, this was Thomas Wayne. He was killed immediately or like a week after, and you know, this fund was essentially all the corrupt people got their hands in it. So they had like this billion dollar unlimited funds, really, to to sell these very vague drugs throughout the the the, the, the city. And, you know, the only way to stop him is to really cut off the money. So, like, I was really hoping Bruce Wayne would come out like, hey, I'm going to come out and, and take care of this fund and like, make sure the money gets into the right people's hands. And that would, A, you know, like you said, stop the, the regular thugs, right, because their money would be cut off. 
and and B give Bruce Wayne something to do and, and make him uh, you know possibly a target or at least you know change his dour persona because that guy didn't smile once in this whole movie like if you find a moment Robert Pattinson smiled in this movie like I'd be very very surprised and that's, that's just how the movie is the other part, portion of this Mike and we talked about this, the sequel the villain or the the newspaper man the article who was killed by Falcone um, to lord that over Thomas Wayne is actually the uh, probably the father of a character played Hush in the comic books and Hush is someone who finds out I believe Bruce Wayne is Batman and goes to impersonate Batman uh, in the uh, in, in the comics and the, the TV shows and Ultimately, um, the video game, you played the video game, right? The Arkham game. So I believe rather than lean into the tease of the Joker in this movie, um, that's very much not a tease, but like they didn't say he's going to be in the movie. They're going to do Hush, but they're obviously saying anytime you have a Batman, Mike, you have to cast a Joker. And they <laughs> they went ahead and cast a Joker that we saw through very, very um, – small jail cell silhouette if you will uh, while he had a, a conversation with uh the riddler throughout this and yeah uh, they uh they really they really couldn't help themselves uh couldn't yeah. they like i i don't think it's necessarily a bad thing but i was like oh this is kind of what happened happened in batman begins right the joker kind of tease on a deck of cards yeah. uh at the end of the first movie um, it would, I, I'm not necessarily saying, uh, Hush would or wouldn't be a, a, a good villain for a Batman film, but I'm trying to see, I'm trying to see what would the version in the comic book kind of do differently compared to kind of what we've already seen a little bit with, um, with the Riddler, right? Cause that's an interesting view that the Riddler took in the film was he was basically kind of like setting up all these clues and traps, uh, and oh. uh, I guess there was, there's technically a few, few, few riddles, right? You know, thumb drive, yeah. but I'm just trying to think like, Oh, what does hush really do differently? Uh, you know, hush is also playing their own games, being very sneaky, manipulative, right? You know, uh, we kind of just need a villain for Batman to punch eventually. So mm -hmm. I feel like if hush does get incorporated, it, it, they, it's gotta be a little bit different, right? I feel like the story has got to go in a little bit of different direction because, Hush in the comic books or like the video games or, you know, any other interpretation, maybe a little too fantastical for this Batman world, right? Like, uh, is he literally going to do a face off, right? And start peeling skin off and looking like different people. You know, how believable is that going to be in this universe? Um, there's obviously there could be a connection to maybe something court of owls related because it's very much kind of like sins of the father. It looks like we're setting up, you know, that was pointed at in this yeah. movie. Um, you have it down here that the post credit scene had yeah. uh, a hint to the, the Thomas Wayne video, right? Yeah. So the Thomas Wayne video that's cut and released to the, the public, right. And, and the, well, I think it's like the one of the Riddler's last videos has been put on a website. However, they've updated this website, the Rada Alana, which was a riddle in the thing to have a countdown, uh, a percentage. It was 27 yesterday. It's at 31 or 32 now. So what does this mean? Uh, are, is this something whenever this is done, are they going to announce the sequel? Or are they going to give us something of a tease? We know there are two side projects, a Catwoman, or three. A Catwoman, a Penguin, and then a Gotham PD, which is now turning into an Arkham-style series in the works at, at HBO. Is, is this a teaser for those? What What is this? Yeah, it could, possibly, it could possibly be that. Uh, it seems like uh, much kind of like how the amazing Spider-Man with Andrew, Andrew Garfield was doing, but maybe hopefully to a different degree, of looking into the legacy of where your main character comes from which usually means a father and a, f a family extended family history so we'll see what happens there mm -hmm. but you know bringing up a uh, catwoman and gotham pd i think the two characters that we haven't touched on quite yet was catwoman and jim gordon because he does not start off as commissioner which i was yeah. like okay we're definitely in kind of like a beginning of batman here if he's I think, not commissioner you know, early on yet. it says like Batman's been out here for two years. I'm like, well, you've, you've told us right out the gate how far this is. Thank you for clarifying that so we don't have to guess the rest of the movie. I think yeah, it was like a newspaper was... article or something like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, Batman's been pretty effective, apparently. Yeah. Um, he's already uh, uh, given the spooks to people just after two years. Um, 
Yeah, I thought uh, Jeffrey Wright played an amazing Commissioner Gordon. I mean, Jeffrey Wright's amazing in everything that he does, uh, right? So I don't think anybody was too concerned about that. I think we did have more eyes on Catwoman, right? Because mm -hmm. we've already had a very iconic performance of Catwoman, of Michelle Pfeiffer, you know, back in the kind of OG cinematic Batman days. And uh, Anne Hathaway uh, what didn't really have a whole lot of time, I would say, to adapt or really lean into a Catwoman. Yeah. We knew that there wasn't really going to be more Batman movies after her. So I don't think anybody was too attached to what she brought to the character. Right. It seems like we're going to be getting more zoe kravitz uh, right. in some aspects i don't know if it'll be a sequel or a movie a spinoff whatever hbo max is doing nowadays yeah. but um yeah, she, i like zoe i like zoe kravitz yeah. I, I she she brought a lot to the table very early on you know as, as someone who who works at the the um the the was it the 45 below or 44 below clubs yeah i think um, it was 44 yeah it, which is a club within the other club which is like the ice mm -hmm. house or something like that so you know she was very capable very um stuff but like yeah at the same time she wasn't like super powered like or like overly powered like batman it's like right no no bulletproof stuff no real fancy weapons just the whip that she to use so that was very fun and she can hold her own that was that was really interesting to see see her do that as well so i, I think she's a great character and you know if she takes a movie off or comes back you know in the show totally be fine with that i think i think it was it was pretty um she, she did a really good job and i think it was very relevant to the story being told as a whole so um yeah I, I'm, I'm trying to think what else you know uh, one of the things I didn't I didn't bring this up because you know we always talk about VR these days. They use VR to visualize the car chase sequence before they filmed it and did the di digital version of it as well, like to see where the cars were from overheads and to the sides, so it would like make yeah. sense like it was an actual car chase, not just like things cut together. Uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like uh, the the way uh, kind of modern big budget movies are made, even though this looked kind of very grounded, I'm sure with a budget and the, and the studio. Um, push that was behind it. I would imagine so much of what we saw was a uh, digital, even if it was yeah. just replacing backgrounds. Because yeah. when you're making like a Gotham, it's a city that doesn't exist, right? So you're kind of getting components from everywhere. This, this movie is all all story aside, a very visually compelling film. Mike, I, I think mm -hmm. it, the way the colors played off each other, the way the shots are framed, it, it's very it goes out of its way to be very artistic. In some of the shots, and some of the you know the longer takes, to be completely honest, in the color color palettes, uh, I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going to liken like at the end when he's wading through the water with the flare in his hand, leading the people, mm -hmm. right? Overhead slow motion, like they they linger on it to show this just a little too long. And what is it? His bedroom in Wayne Manor like has like all the gothic pointy spikes <laughs> from the ceiling. That that was I feel like that was a little bit of a stretch for yeah. me. Personally, just because I don't know if we really got too many establishing shots of Wayne Manor in and of itself. Yeah. So one of the first times we kind of really see where Bruce Wayne lives, I was just like, is this like a church yeah. in like Barcelona? Like what is happening here? Like I like Gotham might not be real, but it's definitely in the United States yeah. of America. And like it's I don't think it's going to quite look like this. Well, exactly. And, and, and the Wayne Tower where Alfred blew up was a big huge skyscraper downtown right like they showed the mm -hmm. the, the thing blow up on the side so is the bat cave literally underneath the big skyscraper downtown like is that where everything is i don't know the layout as i don't well know. In this one but like yeah i don't know it, it was kind of hard to pick up those pieces because yeah you're like okay what how much is classical batman are we watching and how much of it is a reinvention of matt reeves kind of putting his yeah. own spin on it um, so hopefully maybe we can it, suss a little bit yeah. more out in the sequel. And I think the first, uh, 10, 15 minutes, whatever, where it shows everyone looking in the dark corners, very awesome. And then his fight scene with the, the, the skull or the painted skull gang, uh, really, really powerful. It, Cause especially because at the end of it, like he lets the one kid live. I thought that would actually have a relevance did not, um, that I could tell, but the guy he saved was even scared of him. Like they don't know who Batman is yet. Right. He's like, please don't hurt me. It, whatever yeah that's that's really one good. great thing that i i feel like matt reeves and robert pattinson did with batman in general for this movie you can definitely tell that bruce wayne is working through something right you know mm -hmm. This is not a Batman that has it all together or really knows exactly what he is doing. So when you see Robert Patton, Robert Pattinson starting to beat up one of these clowns, he just keeps going at him, right? Like yeah. a, more punches than necessary to take down this foe. And he's surrounded by a bunch of other people. And I just thought that was a really interesting moment, right? Because like, oh, is this uh, Batman? 
you know, just trying to work through some anger, taking it out on this thug? Or is he being a little bit more intelligent about it? And he's saying, oh, if I sit here and just wallop on this guy in front of all of his friends and like beat him to a pulp while I'm dressed like a maniac, uh, that's really going to put them on edge. I'm going to be able to fight them a lot more effectively. And they're going to think twice before they try to rob somebody at at a train station again. Yeah, he he was very, he's very brutal, uh, you know, throughout Mm -hmm. the whole day. I'd also link into where he breaks into Falcone's, uh, I guess area right, and he fights all the people. That's what we saw the mm. the, the bullets reflecting off his suit in that in that uh, hallway. Yeah, the dark I thought flashes. that vis- yeah, I thought that visual effect worked pretty well. A- anytime like a bullet ricocheted off of him, it didn't look like he was impenetrable, but it definitely looked like uh, he could feel it. But yeah. he was kind of powering through it. <laughs> yeah, he like he took a shotgun blast later that kind of knocked him out uh, right right mm-hmm. there for a bit. So yeah, I, I honestly I, I I'm coming off pretty harsh, but like I, I want this to be better. Like it's Batman, right? It deserves to be the best thing possible, and they've had a lot of time to work on this. Uh, so I just was hoping for a little better ending. You know, we, we see a lot of, you know, we talk about even Marvel stuff has bad endings, right? Like the ending's just kind of meh at the end of the day. And I feel like the ending of this one, like after the Riddler reveal and then he's protecting people from flooding, the whole point of it is the Batman is no longer in the shadows hurting people. He's in the light helping people. I get it, but like it's not, it didn't feel like that was the whole message of the story, right? Like what is... What is Batman? What is Bruce Wayne? Hit the character. What is he thinking and feeling? And what is his goal? Like, what's his next step in this? So, um, overall, I, I, I recommend it. Highly recommend it. I think there are some better ones. I still, I, I would enjoy Batman Begins better than this. I know a lot of people have said they still like the animated. Um, was it Joker Returns from Batman Beyond? Uh, Return of the Joker. And then what was the other one? Um, Mask of the Phantasm. Some people really enjoy Batman 89 uh, better than... I don't know. It, it, you're going to have a... Like you said earlier, Mike, everyone has a Batman that they like and that they can return to no matter how good or bad the new one is. So um, for me, I, I recommend watching this. This is great to watch in theaters. I think it's very worth it. Um, again, whether we agree on the soundtrack or not, I think the sound, the soundscape of the whole thing is beautiful, right? Like this, the whole Ooh. audio... When, like, that co- when the Batmobile turns over? Oh, Ooh. yeah. Oh, I, that... <laughs> it's got... Is that... um. It's a, I can't tell. I don't think it's a Nirvana song, right? Maybe it's a, um, it's the other band, Allison Chain song, maybe that plays with it. It's like the, the atmosphere, the sound, the music, everything is beautifully done. Um, so like, you know, you, if you don't, like, you shouldn't be listening to this on your phone or on your, your, your built in TV speakers. Like you really need to experience everything. And I, I feel being in a theater, you have no distractions on a three hour movie that you're going to need to watch every second of, um, yeah. very much worth it. And if a three-hour movie is indicative of anything, it's that the director was allowed to do what they wanted to do, right? You know, you can pit Marvel and DC uh, movies against each other all you want, but uh, this does not feel like a movie made by committee, and that's not necessarily always a bad thing. You yeah. know, another way to say a movie is made by committee was saying it was made with teamwork, and yeah. that's not necessarily a bad thing. So uh, my takeaway with this film is it was kind of nice to kind of see a big budget comic book movie that really has a perspective and a creative taste and you can kind of see the point of view of the filmmaker in it kind of like how when yeah. nolan tackled uh batman yeah. i feel like we haven't seen that too much recently in some of our other kind of big uh budget movies that we talk about well, on i, I think show. i think dc has kind of lent their hand to this lately i believe i would say good or bad birds of prey does not feel like a committee movie right that feels like someone wrote that movie passionately about those characters, good or bad suicide squad. Again, definitely a James Gunn film this as well. Joker before that, I feel DC on some of these properties are, are loosening their grip right after the Snyder uh, effect kind of comment come through and, and, and had some issues. So I think they're DC going forward. We're going to see some changes. Um, it could, it could be good or bad. doesn't matter, but I agree with you whether I love it or not. This is definitely what Matt Reeves wanted to make and what he did make at the end of the day. And that's, that's no fault of his own. I think that's a, that's a great opportunity to do so, mm-hmm. especially with uh, literally one of like the top two comic book properties in, in the world of all time. Yeah. Well so. here at the very end, Chris, do you want to make any predictions? Just throw it out oh. there for the next movie. Cause this is obviously getting a yeah. sequel. I can't imagine a world where this movie does not get a sequel. So yeah. uh, what, what are what's uh, just one prediction? Yeah. I, again, uh, let me think. You, you, you got one that you can pitch out first because I feel like I need yeah, to think on mine just I, a second. I, I, I like the moment there in the kind of the final third act, um, 
uh, when Batman's fighting all the Riddler goons and he needs that extra leg up. He needs that shot of adrenaline, which looked a little yeah. green that he yeah. kind of pulls out of his utility belt. And I don't know about you, but Bane. that looked like something that might, <laughs> that Bane might enjoy. Yeah. So I'm not necessarily I, saying we will be seeing Bane in the next movie, but I think that's a kind of a fun, interesting uh, way to kind of just show the existence of a substance in this universe, yeah. right? That could give somebody the an, an extra edge. So I'm going to lean the, a little bit of another direction. I think um, what I would like to see, we've had two Two-Faces, we've had two Banes before. Uh, I would more lean into possibly a good Mr. Freeze. What would a Mr. Freeze in this world look like, right? Like, Oh, Chris, uh, that's a great idea. Because, you know, we have a really good... Everyone loves the animated series Mr. Freeze, right? Like, that's like end-all, be-all Mr. Freeze. I don't want a gimmicky Arnold Schwarzenegger Freeze. I want to give me someone... Someone who is literally his whole purpose, like he's cold, literally... And, and, you know, emotionally because his wife is on ice because he can't save her from dying, right? And that, like, that's his whole goal. So how do you – I don't think we need to escalate it into supernatural or science or technology. But, like, anything, like, I think would bring a new character to screen, probably not our third iteration of Bane. I, I totally get what you're saying. I, I say Hush. Hush feels, you know, relevant. But, like you said, it's, it's very similar to this, right? Um, it's, it's just a person attacking literally Bruce Wayne, um, you know, personally. I don't feel uh, the Joker is the next one, right? I feel like they have him, but I don't feel he's set up to do anything. Do we? Are we ready for another Two Face, Mike? Um, we've we've had two Two Faces. Do we need one that makes it beyond his movie, like a a multiple movie Two Face? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe the strategy here is I I totally agree. Characters that we have seen already should kind of maybe take a step back so we can kind of bring others forward. Maybe if we do see a Two Face or we do see a Bane. Or, you know, you know, what else could be out there? You know, Penguin mm-hmm. is com- is coming up, but it looks like they were going to take a different direction with Penguin slightly. Yeah. Maybe like a, a Poison Condiment, Ivy. Condiment Man. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they kind of take more of a, 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 not like a henchman role, right? But like a secondary villain in the movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. And also, I think you do bring up a good point of with this kind of very, very grounded film that we've brought up. How do you kind of explain, like if you do a Mr. Freeze, right, you know, how do you elegantly explain a man who loves to use like kind of a freezing weapon, uh, right? I I suppose he could be a scientist that puts like a cryo weapon together, right? Yeah. Uh, But, you know, like how do you make that realistic in this world? Exactly. And and honestly, you know, I I believe, you know, uh, Nolan was able to succeed in making us believe Ra's al Ghul was was real, right? Like someone who's immortal uh, in his Batman Begins movies and... You know, they, 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 they also, he also kind of had Scarecrow as a villain in his first one. Maybe we don't need, maybe, maybe it is time for a Scarecrow. Maybe it's someone who uses fear gas or, you know, fear emotion. Um, the other direction. I don't know. Um, I, I just, like I said, I, like I said, I, I don't want to rely on the same villains when Batman is known for his rogue galleries as Peacemaker, uh, his dad's neighbor said, like, you know, Batman <laughs> has lots of rogues, lots of villains. Lots of things that we can rely on. You know, even even Calendar Man. Like everyone thought this was going to be based on the Long Halloween. It starts on Halloween, but it's not the Long Halloween by a long shot. So, <laughs> it, do we do we get somebody like Calendar Man or, or whatever going forward? So, a, a lot of opportunity. So, if you guys listening to this have anyone you would like to see reinvented, reimagined in this, um, you know, year three, year four, Batman verse, uh, do let us know. I'd be interested to 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 hear that. Uh, Mike, it's time to go do our regularly scheduled weekly news episode. But if people want to know what you're doing, how you're hanging out, where your bat cave is, where can they find that at? Well, they can find me at Mike Royer Design on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And you can read my web comics at pickledcomics.com. I made a web comic about Batman once. It's like uh, back there in the archives. Mm-hmm. So you might have to click back a few times, but you can go check that out at pickledcomics.com. Chris, if people want to catch up with you, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter, Valdan, V-A-L-D-A-N, or Instagram, Valdan87, uh, over there. I, I've seen a lot of people, the hot takes on Twitter this weekend, is ranking your Batman movies. Rank, I'm not going to rank my Batman movies. I'm, I'm sorry, but like, um, if you have a Batman movies you or rankings that you want to share, maybe top three. I don't need to know all 15 Batman movies where you place them. It gets a little thing. I, I'd be interested to know that. Um, because one of the Batman movies, I, one of my favorite ones growing up with Mike literally was Batman forever. Not because it's a good movie, but because you're at that <laughs> right age where Jim Carrey's at the height of his powers. 
Tommy Lee Jones is in there. You know, it's got all sorts of toys and video games tie-ins. But I think this Riddler is much better than that one back then. So, um, anyway, if people know about the show, our normal weekly news episodes we do. We don't just do reviews when movies come out. We do something every week. Like you said, 365 of them now. And then some. Where can people find those at? Oh, all you got to do is head on over to SuperheroSlate.com. That is the best place to find all the avenues we host our show. And to get our awesome show notes when we're talking about uh, weekly news. So you can follow along over there. Uh, You can find us on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, wherever else you love to listen to fine podcasts like our own here. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and get merch at SuperheroSlate.com slash store. Like Chris said, we love it when people re- reach out. Uh, what did you think of the Batman? Are you looking forward to another the Batman? What are they going to call it? Uh, they Batman? Uh, him Batman? Mm-hmm. What's the next title of the movie going to be called? Are we looking at a subcolon? I don't know. The Batman. <laughs> yes, we're going to throw another one in there from a multiverse. Probably. Batmans? Is it like an alien uh, situation? Batmans? Batman, yes, Batman. Bat People. Yeah, Bat is. People, that's the next one for you. Uh, but we love our super fans, and if you want to be a super fan of this here show, all you got to do is share the show with a friend, share the show with a buddy, and we will be here every single week, folks. That's right. We'll catch you next week. Bye. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to subscribe.